The Robert Jackson Center is located in Jamestown, New York, just over the border, and it's designed to advance the legacy of Justice Robert H. Jackson. The question is, why bother? Really, why bother? And the answer is, Justice Jackson is an answer to a recently asked Jeopardy question. <laughs> Name the only person in the history of the United States to be a, an attorney general, a solicitor general, and justice of the United States Supreme Court. And the answer is Robert Jackson. That's cool. Now, you go on and you learn a little bit more that he was born right here, right here in Warren County, Pennsylvania, Spring Creek Township, just down the road. He was born in 1892. He traveled, his family took him over to Frewsburg. He graduated from high school in Frewsburg. Then he spent one year in Jamestown High School and never went to college. Never went to college. Now, all you students, I, we hope you all go to college. Don't, <laughs> don't follow the path here. But you'll see why this life is important. Never went to college, went to one year of law school, but never graduated from law school. And you'd have to say, how did he become an answer to that Jeopardy question? An incredibly interesting story. Why? Because he enjoyed reading, writing, and he really worked very hard at his studies. All of you, all of you, when you leave today, will get one of these compliments of community eye care specialists, DLS Financial Services, Haynes and Company, uh, Attorney Bob Hampson, who've made this available free to all of you so you can learn a little bit more about Robert Jackson. So grab it as you're leaving. There's also some additional information on Justice Jackson biographically. But let me continue this. Because remember what I said, born here, he's your guy. He was in turn, Frewsburg, Jamestown, never went to college, never graduated from law school, read for the law, became a member of the Bar Association at the earliest age possible, age 21, practiced law in Jamestown, represented the Blair Company, very close to the Blairs, and represented Corey Jamestown, represented various folks in the Corey Warren area, of which we have files on. Then, when he was in Albany Law School for that one year, he got to know a guy named Franklin Roosevelt. Students, Franklin Roosevelt was a governor of New York, president of the United States in four terms. They became friends. During that time period that President Roosevelt was in office in 1934, he asked, Justice, he asked Robert Jackson, an attorney in Jamestown, New York, from Warren County, Pennsylvania, whether he wanted to go to Washington to be what was then known as the chief counsel for the Internal Revenue Service. And the answer was, yeah, I'll go over there for one year. Interestingly enough, his first matter there, he was asked to try a guy named Andrew Mellon. Down in Pennsylvania, we kind of know that name, Andrew Mellon. And he had to try him for civil tax fraud. And guess where? Pittsburgh. So if you can imagine trying your first lawsuit for tax matters in Pittsburgh against Andrew Mellon, you'd say, wow, that's fairly daunting. Guess what? He won. And when you go to Washington, D.C., you students or anybody goes to the portrait gallery in Washington, D.C., you'll see a nice plaque. It'll say, all of these portraits given through the beneficence of Andrew Mellon. You'd say, wow, isn't that nice? The reality, that was the settlement of the civil tax fraud suit, <laughs> which Mellon was found guilty, or there was a judgment against him for $750,000. So that's the deal. So when you go there, know that that Jackson piece. Jackson became, after that, he hung around for the balance of his life. Again, assistant attorney general, Solicitor General, which means he argues before the United States, on behalf of the United States, before the Supreme Court. And therefore, in fact, Louis Brandeis uh, stated that Jackson, because of his success there, should be the Solicitor General for life. He's that good. Then he became an Attorney General for your World War II buffs. He's the guy who was responsible for writing the opinion for President Roosevelt on the Lend-Lease. 
You'll study that. You'll study the fact that President Roosevelt, before we got into the war, actually cut a deal to give exchange bases for ships. And the issue was whether or not Congress had to, be, had to approve that. Roosevelt got an opinion from Jackson, Robert Jackson, then Attorney General, saying it was okay as an executive power. So Jackson was in the middle of all that and allegedly wrote the opinion up in Jamestown, New York at a park, sitting there with a guy named Fred Dunn. Uh, who knows? Then he became, after Attorney General, he became the 82nd Justice of the United States. Only 81 before him. How cool, because he came from here, Warren County. Guess what? Never went to college, never graduated from law school, but he read, he read and read and read. In fact, <coughs> we have his reading list. And all of you would look at that and you'd say, you'd be embarrassed at the number of classics and books you haven't read. But Jackson took it and took it very seriously. And then Jackson stayed on the Supreme Court and handled such cases as Brown versus Board of Education, the Korematsu case, and the one that's the hottest ticket right now is the Youngstown steel seizure case, where a lot of conversation as to what the inherent powers are of the President of the United States. President Truman took over the steel industry in 1952, and the issue is, could he do it? Jackson's opinion is now the gold standard, the one that's quoted by all the current justices with regards to how you define whether or not the president crosses the line. That's quite remarkable. Again, a guy never graduated from law school, never, never went to college, never graduated from law school, from Warren County, Pennsylvania. And then he died in 1954 and was, the funeral services were up in Jamestown, New York. He's buried in Frewsburg, New York, just right over the border. And all eight justices of the United States Supreme Court came to his funeral. Never happened before, hasn't happened since. That's the respect they had for Jackson. We're talking Earl Warren, Felix Frankfurter, Hugo Black, William Douglas, all sh came in a train to Warren. The body was actually taken off here in Warren. The family went to the Blairs. They spent time with the Blairs, then came up to Jamestown. The justices came into Jamestown. Incredible. But the piece of the puzzle that in his biography that I just skipped over was in 1945, he was the chief prosecutor at the International Tribunal at the Nuremberg Trials. That's the trial that ended World War II. That's the trial that was against the Hermann Goerings, the Hesses, Rosenbergs, etc. And right here, right over here, Sam Bonavita, an attorney from Warren, Pennsylvania, guess what? He was in Nuremberg and had an opportunity to meet with Justice Jackson on several occasions. It's a great story, a story unto itself. But we have a Warren County attorney who has a connect. Also, I don't know if time will permit, so let's talk about it right now. Sam Bonavita also has a connect with our speaker, Senator Specter. Sam Bonavita was a district attorney here in Warren County. Sam Bonavita spent time with Senator Specter. Interestingly enough, we hope Senator Specter will talk about Robert Jackson. In the flesh over here is a guy who connects the dots, interestingly enough, from Jackson, Warren, to Specter, Sam Bonavita. So let me pause and just thank Sam, and for he's a big supporter of the Jackson Center as well, and uh, just give him an applause for this. <laughs> The International Criminal Court, which I'll talk briefly about when Senator Specter is here, is the legacy of the Nuremberg trial. So that which is going on today at The Hague, that which is going on tribunals in Rwanda, Cambodia, Sierra Leone, are all legacies of the Nuremberg trial and something which Robert Jackson was intimately involved in. I w we've been to Germany. We've been to the courtroom. It's still there, courtroom 600. And they believe your guy, Robert Jackson, walks on water. Why? Because he was the architect of the trial. Because at the time of the end of the war, they weren't sure whether they were going to have a trial. There was no 
complete agreement among the Allies that there would be a trial. So it was Jackson appointed by Truman to go over to sit down with the French, the Russians, the British, to decide if there would be a trial, what the trial would be about, who the defendants would be, and actually administer the trial. You'll actually have, there's a treaty that sets this all up called the London Agreement. And on behalf of the United States of America, signing the treaty is not the President of the United States, but in fact, Robert Jackson. Robert Jackson from Warren County, Pennsylvania, who never went to college, never graduated from law school, got himself, put himself in a position where he was the architect of the Nuremberg trial and the folks in Germany, interestingly enough, were the folks, they sit, they say, Jackson was the architect. We, the Germans, would like to do as much as we can to honor Robert Jackson. And in fact, we have actually have an agreement with the city of Nuremberg. The Jackson Center has an agreement with the city of Nuremberg and we'll be going over there to be part of a ribbon dedication of a museum in honor of the Nuremberg trial, which is remarkable when you think about Germany, who was obviously did not win the day. The trials were in Germany. The trial dealt with all of the leaders of the German government. They were all, most of them were found guilty, some hanged, and yet here they are 60 years later actually pausing to commemorate that. And they're doing that to honor Robert Jackson. So that's a story a little bit about Robert Jackson. That's the reason for the fact that we have had a center set up in Jamestown, New York. We commend all you students, all of you, come on over the border because we're coming back, we're coming down here to have a chance to continue to learn something of which I didn't know that much about. I suspect this group over here, even though they're in the legal business, knew that there was a Justice Jackson. They knew there was a Nuremberg trial, that Jackson was part of it, and knew he was from someplace in Warren. But during the last few years, when all of a sudden you have Chief Justice Rehnquist, Justice Sandra Day O'Connor, you have members from the Nuremberg trial, you have members from the, uh, the government, and like I say, Senator Specter, we've had Senator Clinton, Senator Schumer, and Senator Specter has talked about, very publicly, about Justice Jackson. That's a thrill, and that's why the education process, the fact that the, leg the Jackson Center is created, is hopefully to advance the knowledge base. All of you, please take the book, read it. Uh, it's designed for young readers, but therefore it's, we'll all understand it. And uh, it's, it's a terrific opportunity. But I appreciate, David, the opportunity to talk a little bit about the Jackson Center, to talk about Robert Jackson.